Welcome to the Magic of Excel seminars here at Highline College for high school students for the next four Wednesdays. In this video, we're going to see how to use Excel and the magic of using formulas, formatting, sorting, filtering, pivot tables, flash fill, keyboards, and much more. Now, this Excel file right here is available for you to download so you can follow along. Just click on the description below the video, and you can download this Excel file. Now, here are all of our topics. And we're going to start off by going to the sheet, What is Excel? Now, down here we see the sheet, What is Excel? We simply click on it, and we jump to that sheet. Now, what is Excel? Well, Excel is the most used computer program on the planet Earth. It is used in all fields, business, science, engineering, sports, teaching, music and arts, and much more. Now, since many of the participants in this seminar have never used Excel, we got to talk about the basics. Now, if I come up and take my cursor, and I can see the letter C there, and click on that C, that's called a column. If I do the same thing on the row number 8, that's the row. All Excel sheets are made up of columns, which are letters, and rows, which are numbers. And guess what? The intersection of a column and row, that's called a cell. And the name of this cell, C8, can be seen up here in the name box. Now, the name of each cell, if I click over here, that's E6. Or you can see the E6 over here. Later, we'll use the data and the numbers in cells to make formulas and charts. Now, all the cells are called a sheet. And look down here. I can click. There's a sheet called Format and Formulas, Formulas 2. If I come back over to What is Excel, all of these sheets, they are called the workbook or the file. You could see the file name up here, the Magic of Excel, High School Excel Seminar. So that's the name of the file. And this file contains lots of sheets. And each one of those sheets contains lots of data. Now, we're going to learn about many fun features in Excel. And we got to talk about the Ribbon tab. If you look up here, hey, there's the Home Ribbon tab. Each one of these is a different tab. And all together, they're called the Ribbon. Now, on the Home Ribbon, we'll be able to do things like click Bold, fill the cell with color, use font color. Over on Insert, we'll do things like Insert Column Charts or Insert a Pivot Table, which is one of the most amazing features in Excel. Page Layout, that's what we use if we're going to print the page. Formulas, Data, and a bunch of other tabs. Now, that's a little bit about what is Excel. But what does Excel do? It basically does three things. We can make calculations. Notice over here, here is a column of number of wins playing the video game Overwatch. On Monday, you had four wins. Tuesday, you had six. There's the whole column. But we would like to make a calculation. We would like to add all of these numbers. Now, this is going to be our first example of a formula. I click in the cell, and I'm going to go over to the Home Ribbon tab. And over here in editing, look at that. It says auto sum. That sigma, that is a Greek letter that means add. Now I want you to hover your cursor. Don't click on it. Just hover your cursor. And it gives you a little description of what it will do. We can even see a picture of the sum function. So now I'm going to click. And because I had that cell selected, look at that. It actually has the cell range. N4 all the way to N8 with some parentheses. That sum, that's a special built-in function. That sums or adds for us. And all formulas will always start with an equal sign. Now notice, we use the button up here, and it automatically put our formula in. Later, we'll create our own formulas that don't have a specific button. But now watch this. I'm going to hit Enter, and sure enough, 33 total wins. Now I want you to take your selection cursor, that's the selection cursor, that white cursor with a black shadow, and click back on the cell. And I want to delete it. So I use the Delete key. 
And there, it removes the content. In our case, it was a formula showing a number result, but leaves the formatting. Now, I want to teach you about keyboards. And I want you to hover your cursor up there. There's a special keyboard for the sum function, Alt equals. And although there are 450 different functions in Excel, only the sum function is cool enough to have a keyboard. So I want to try this. I want you to click in the cell N9 and hold Alt and then hit the equal sign. you got to be kidding me. That is so cool. Now I simply hit Enter, and boom, there it is, 33. Now why would we use Excel rather than a calculator? Here's the reason why. Tuesday it says there were six wins, but actually we had an epic day. We won 16 games that day. I want to replace that six with 16. Guess what? I don't even have to delete. I simply type 1, 6. And when I hit Enter, watch the formula. When I hit Enter, boom, there it is, 43. That's why we use Excel. In fact, the guys who invented the very first spreadsheet all the way back in 1979, their, their names are Bricklin and Frankston. That was their idea. They wanted a visual calculator that would automatically update, meaning that that calculation for adding would update when we changed a number. Remember, if you're using a handheld calculator and you type all these numbers in and get the number, if you change one of them, you have to retype all of them in. So that is magic. Now, another thing that Excel does is it helps us to hold or store and format our data. Now, notice down here, we entered some dates. And here's the amount you got paid. So each Friday, you got your paycheck. Now, we can store our data here. And later, we'll see how to type this in. And when we save the file, of course, it will be there later. But we want to talk about formatting. Now, if we highlight these dates up here, Home Ribbon tab, these are called groups right here, Font Alignment Number. But we want to format our number. So we come to the drop down. And you're not going to believe this. I can come down here and format this as a long date, and it will tell me the actual day and month. So when I click this, uh-oh, they put a fence up so we can't see. That error actually means the column isn't wide enough. So I want you to come up, and in between the K and J column, point right in the middle, and when you see that cursor, we can click and drag to widen the column. And there it is. There's our formatting. Here's another awesome thing about formatting. We type this in, but we actually wanted to see dollar signs to indicate this is money. And right here for 398, I really want 0 .00. But we were lazy. We just typed the actual numbers in. No problem. Number formatting comes to our rescue. We come up to the drop down. And if we select currency, you've got to be kidding me. It puts the dollar sign and the point zero zero. Now think about this. If you're typing in data, we saved four total clicks right there. And if you're entering numbers a lot, that saves a lot of time. Now I want you to click in the cell K18, and I see the dollar sign 398.00. But if you look up to the formula bar, that's actually what is in the cell. That 398, that's what we typed in. But boom, the number formatting displays it as if there's a dollar sign and a decimal and 00. zero. The third thing that Excel does is it performs data analysis. What's data analysis? Data analysis is just a fancy term that means convert your data into useful information. Now over here, we have a proper table, day column, player name, and wins. Here's the days, the player name, and the number of wins. Now, if I quickly want to sort these numbers right here so that the biggest one is on top, and then the next biggest, and next biggest, so I can see who had the best scores. Instead of manually doing this, this is already converted to an Excel table. And that little drop down right there, if I click this drop down, I can see there's some amazing features that are right at the top. Sort A to Z, that would bring the smallest one to the top. Or Z to A, that would bring the biggest one. 
So what we're doing is the data is just raw data, but I want to organize it so I can see the biggest ones. This is a simple example of data analysis. So I simply click, and boom, there it is. Jabari had the most with 13. Tyrone had 12. And Makina had 11. Wow, that is amazing. So Excel will make our life easy when we're making calculations, when we're storing and formatting data, and when we want to do data analysis. Now we want to go over to the sheet Format and Formula, and I'm going to click on this sheet. All right, our goal on this sheet is to store and format our data in Excel and create formulas to calculate the total and the average number of wins. We're going to create this exact example we saw in our last sheet. And these are the topics from our original topic list that we'll cover. Now I actually want to scroll down. We can come over and there's a scroll bar. There's also a scroll arrow. Click, 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 and it scrolls. Or if you have a wheel on your mouse, you can simply roll the wheel, the scroll arrow, and click. Now I've started this out. It says day. But now we need to type right here. We click in the cell, and we simply type wins plane Overwatch. Now when I hit Enter, notice that the text is hanging over, and we really want it to wrap. Well, we simply click up in the cell, and this is another amazing thing that Excel can do. Home, ribbon tab alignment, there it is, wrap text. I simply click, and it automatically wraps. If I type lots more data, it would automatically wrap. Now I want to add some formatting to both cells, so I click and drag to select both cells. And up here in Home, ribbon tab font, we can click the drop down and choose whatever color we want. I'm going to select dark blue. And then there's the font color. Now, if you get confused, because people do get confused between the two, the letter means it's going to apply the color to the actual letters. So when I select white, white font appears. Now, let's come here and notice we need to create Monday through Friday. And this is simply amazing. If I type Monday, and instead of hitting Enter, if I hit Enter, it pushes the cursor down. I'm going to click back in the cell and have to just pretend I didn't hit Enter. I actually want to enter the content and keep the cell selected. So instead of Enter, I'm going to use Control-Enter. Now we're going to see some magic. We can see the green line around the cell is highlighting. But in the lower right-hand corner, that little green box, it's called the Fill Handle. Now notice we have a selection cursor. But if we move the selection cursor over the Fill Handle, it turns to a crosshair. Now, Microsoft named it a crosshair. I like to call it an angry rabbit. Now, with our angry rabbit, I'm going to click, left click, and drag down. And look at that. The screen tip is giving a hint of what it's doing. It's automatically filling the days of the week. That is a big time saver. We didn't have to type all of that. We typed one day, used our angry rabbit and fill handle, and copied it down. Now we can come over, and we're going to type 4, Enter, 16, Enter. I'm using the number pad. That's off to the right. There's numbers and Enter. That's the fastest way to enter numbers into Excel. So 4 on the number pad, Enter, 7, Enter, 12, Enter. Now I'm going to come over and click in cell E18 and type total wins, and Enter. Now, we can highlight the entire table, click and drag. There's another great way to highlight the current table. If you have a number pad, go over and look. There's an asterisk key. And if you hold Control asterisk, it highlights the whole table. If you do not have a number pad, you're going to have to use Control shift 8 and that will highlight the entire range. Now I want to come up to Home, Ribbon, Tab, Font Group, and there's the Border button. I click the arrow, and there's all sorts of cool borders we can apply. I'm going to select All Borders. Now I'm going to click in this cell where I'm going to have the Formula come up to the Fill button. And you can pick whatever color you want. I happen to have used this already, so it's right here. But if you don't see a color you like here, come down to More Colors. You can do it two ways, check from there, or you can actually make your own custom color. And it will even write the custom RGB number for you. 
I'm going to come over to Standard and simply select the color I want. Click OK. Now, when I teach Excel, I always differentiate the cell that's going to get the formula from the actual raw data by using this green color. Now, I'd actually like to have a solid line and then a double line. So we want to highlight both cells, come back up to Borders, and now click on More Borders. And this opens up what's called the Format Cells dialog box. And actually, there's all sorts of amazing things you can do to cells. And on the Border tab, we're allowed much more variety. We can select our line and our color. I'm going to keep it as automatic, which is black, and select this medium thick line. And come over here. And I like to click to apply that line. But you can also use this button here. Now I'm going to click on the double line. And I can either select that button right there or simply click in the location I want the double line. Now when I click OK, well, that doesn't look different. I have to click over to the side, and sure enough, there it is. Now that is a beautiful template that we can use over and over. Now let's click in the cell where we want to add, Alt equals. Now I hit Enter. And of course, as we saw, the beauty of building a template in Excel is for next week, I might highlight all of this and delete, and then type in for this week, 5, Enter, 6, Enter, 8, Enter, 11, Enter, and 12, Enter. And just like that, Excel does its magic. Now, I'd like to come down here and calculate the average. Simply going to type average. And instead of hitting Enter or Control Enter, since my goal is to come over and create a formula here, I'm going to hit the Tab key. Tab will put the thing in the cell, in our case, the text average, and move the cursor to the right. Now we want to type our formula. Now remember, if we click back up here, and I'm going to use the F2 key to put it in Edit Mode. All formulas start with an equal sign, and there's lots of built-in functions. In our case, we use the sum function here and then the range. We're going to down in cell F20 build this ourselves. We're going to type an equal sign, then the name of the function that calculates average, and then highlight our range. Enter, enter. When we type an equal sign, as soon as we do that, we're telling Excel, I'm making a formula. Now, we want to try and guess the name of the function. Average means you add all these up. In our case, we would divide by the count, which is 5. Average tells you what the average or typical number of wins is. So if we're guessing what they named this function, they named this one smart. So I'm going to type A just like that. As soon as I type the letter A after an equal sign, it gives me all of the functions I might want that start with the letter A. Then I'm going to type a V. And there's a bunch of different average functions. And you can read the screen tips. I'm going to use the down arrow. If I read this one, returns the arithmetic mean of our arguments. Our arguments are simply our numbers. And that's what we want. So I'm going to, with it selected in this blue color, I'm going to use the Tab key. You could actually type all that out also. But there we go. We have our equal sign, the name of the function we're going to use. And now numbers, we simply take our cursor, our selection cursor, and click and drag. And now watch this. Oh, I made a mistake, but no problem. As long as the dancing ants are dancing around the cells, you're in full edit mode. So notice I can redirect this until I get it correct. Now I'm going to select F13 all the way to F17. Do not select that total wins right there, because then it would be the incorrect numbers. Close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, look at that. On average, we won 8.4 games per day. Now, here's another awesome trick. I want this exact formatting down here. So I highlight both cells. And up in the Home Ribbon tab clipboard, there's the Format Painter. Also, if I highlight this and right click, this is called the Mini Toolbar. There's my paintbrush. And what this does is it copies just the formatting. So when I click, notice the dancing ants are dancing around there. And my cursor, don't click, because wherever you click, that formatting will be applied. But notice the cursor has a paintbrush. 
So now I simply click on the single cell average, and just like that, it applies the formatting only. If I click off to the side, that is amazing. Back in cell F20, I click and then hit F2. I can see it did not replace the function I had in there. It just applied the formatting and Enter. And again, the magic of Excel, I made a mistake on Monday. It was actually 15 wins. When I hit Enter, both the sum function and our average update. Now we want to go look at another formula example. I'm going to click on the sheet Formulas 2. Now, here's the topics we're going to cover from our original topic list. But our goal is two parts. First, we need to figure out how tall this table is. And the second goal is we want to calculate the max, min, total, and average sales. So this table here is a typical transaction table. So if you work at a business, you keep a record of each one of your sales. So this is the date. There's the sales rep, and that's the amount of the sale. Here's the date, the sales rep, amount of the sale. Now, we got this table, but I need to know how tall it is. If I use my wheel on my mouse or my scroll arrow over here, it might take a long time to scroll down. I'm going to wheel back up, and here's a keyboard to jump to the bottom of the table and save a lot of time. You hold the Control key and then use your arrow key. I'm going to use Down arrow. And just like that, wow, for the first six months of the year, we had well over 5,000 sales. Now, we use Control Down arrow to jump to the bottom. Notice it kept going, going, going until it ran into an empty cell, and then it jumped back. Now, what would happen if I Control arrow here? You've got to be kidding me, it went all the way down to the bottom. And yes, an Excel sheet has over 1 million rows. Now, if you get stuck somewhere in your sheet and you just want to jump back to cell A1, you got to find your Home key and then use Control Home. That keyboard is awesome. That works in Word and in websites and in Excel. It always jumps to the top. Well, we saw how tall that table was by using Control Arrow. Now, if we come down here, and we've already calculated total using sum and average using the average function, but we want to calculate the biggest value or find the maximum value in this entire over 5,000 row column. Well, first we need to figure out what the name of the function is. Equal, and you might think it's large or big, and you could try those. Large, there actually is a large function, but that returns what they call in statistics the kth largest. That means you could get the second biggest, third biggest, so on. So that's not the function we want. We might try big. I don't see a big there. Now notice. If you have some text in a formula and it's not the name of a function, it doesn't give you any option. And in fact, if you entered this, if I did Control-Enter, it says, hey, I have no idea what that name is you just gave us. Now, I entered it incorrectly, so I'm going to type an equal sign. And that replaces what's there and starts my formula over. Now I'm going to try M, A. And I can already see there's a max, so I arrow down. And I read the screen tip, returns the largest value in a set of values. That sounds perfect. So I'm going to hit Tab. Now, number. In our example with the average function, we simply took our cursor and clicked and dragged, right? We went like this. But I do not want to drag 5,000 rows. So simply click in the top cell. And if we, instead of doing Control Arrow, we hold Control and Shift. And then down arrow, look at that. It highlighted all the way to the bottom. Now, you can see your formula up in the formula bar starting to emerge. I'm going to close parentheses. I can see that it closed parentheses up in the formula bar. And when I hit Enter, it put the formula in the cell and jumped down. If I scroll up with my wheel on my mouse, that is amazing. Wow, the biggest sale was $1,000. $992.24. Now, let's do the same thing finding the smallest sale. Now, you could try small or something like that, but the name of this function is 
M I N. I just typed M I N. I see it highlighted in blue. I hit tab. Same thing. It needs some numbers. I click in the top cell. Control Shift down arrow highlights all the way to the bottom. Close parentheses and enter. Now I scroll up a bit. Wow, 19 cents was the smallest sale. All right, let's try total. Alt equals. Oh, look at that. It's trying to be polite by guessing, but that is completely wrong. No problem. Remember, it's in full edit mode because we see the dancing ants. So I click on the top cell, Control Shift down arrow, and Enter. Scroll up a bit. Wow, the total is huge. Average sale, that means it will add them all up and divide by the count. Equals A-V-E-R. I see my function tab. It wants some numbers. I'm going to give it all the numbers. Click in the top cell, Control Shift down arrow, close parentheses, and Enter. Now I scroll up. I'm going to highlight all four answers, go up to Home, Number, and let's add some currency. And let's look at currency and accounting. If I click on currency, uh-oh, the fence is up. That means I need to widen the column. So between F and G, I click and drag. Now, currency is what we applied. We can even see that it's applied there. It has a dollar sign that's called floating. It always sits right next to the first number. If we select, instead of currency, we select accounting, the dollar sign is fixed on the outside. I'm going to go back to currency. I like currency. All right, so we accomplished both of our goals, figuring out how tall this was and entering four different functions, max, min, sum, and average, and highlighting quickly using keyboards. All right, let's come over. We're going to go to our next sheet, Formulas 2. Now, on this sheet, we have one, two formulas we need to create. Down here, we have our topics from our original list. And here are some important notes that we'll go over as we create our formulas. Formula goal number one is to calculate take home pay for each employee. So here are the employee names. This is the pay for the month. But we have to take out the tax amount to figure out what the take home pay is. Now, if we were doing this on a handheld calculator, we have to calculate each one of these calculations individually. But in Excel, we don't have to do that. We create our first formula. And this will be the first time that we'll see how to use the fill handle in our Angry Rabbit to copy a formula down. All right, you ready? Not only that, but this formula we're not going to be using sum, average, max, or min. We're just going to create our own formula that takes B4 and subtracts C4. So you ready? Click in cell D4. Equal sign starts all formulas. And we can put the cell references into our formula two different ways. We can simply take our selection cursor, and when I click, there it is. It's looking right at Jabari's pay for the month. Then I subtract. Now I click on Jabari's tax paid. And there we go, the names of the two cells with a subtraction. Now I'm going to click the Escape key. And the Escape key is in the upper left-hand corner. It's a great key to know in many programs when you get into trouble and you just want to revert back to what was in the cell before you put it in edit mode. So I'm going to click Escape, because I want to show you an even better way to put the cell references into our formula. Equal sign starts all formulas. And then I'm going to use my left arrow, left arrow, then subtraction, and right arrow. That is going to be faster if the cell references are close than if you're using your mouse. Now, I want to enter this formula in the cell and copy down. So instead of using Enter, I'm going to use Control Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected. I can actually see my formula up in the formula bar. Now, here's the amazing part. I'm going to point to the fill handle with my selection cursor. And when it turns to an angry rabbit, double click your angry rabbit. And it automatically sends it down. Now, it knew to keep copying the formula down, 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 down until it saw that there was no employee here, so it stopped. Now, the important thing when you copy a formula down a column is to go to the last cell and hit the F2 key to put it in edit mode and verify that the formula is correct. 
Now notice, it totally got it. FAMS pay for the month minus the appropriate tax. Now I'm going to click Escape, go to the top cell, and hit F2. Now I want you to notice something. Even though it says B4 minus C4, when I copy that down, if it really was B4 minus C4, then down here I would still be looking at B4 and C4. These are actually called relative cell references. That means the formula is always going to look one, two cells to my left. Now, do you see how that's perfect? I can go to any employee, and when I hit F2, that B8 is really not B8. It's always look two cells to my left. Now, that is convenient for us, because we're allowed with relative cell reference to always copy our formula down. I click Escape. I go to the last cell in F2. It doesn't say B4 minus C4. It says, yes, two cells to my left minus one cells to my left. That is profound, because with just a few clicks and then a double click, we're done calculating our take home pay for all the employees. Now we want to try a different calculation. And we're going to learn that there's actually two different types of cell references that we're going to need. Now notice, every single employee here, if I'm calculating the tax, I need to say whatever the pay for the month is times the tax rate. Whatever the pay for the month is times the tax rate. Now before we figure out how to do one formula and copy it down, we want to talk about a tax rate. Now when you see 0.1, that really is like 10 pennies. That means for every $1 the employee makes, they have to pay 10 pennies in tax. Now, if you live in the Seattle area, our tax rate when you go to the store is just about 9.99. So we'll call it 10%. Now, when you hear 10% or you looked at the decimal 0.1, it really means for every $1, they're taking out 10 pennies. So when you buy a candy bar for $1 and you pay $1.10, you're actually paying 10 cents in tax. Now, normally when we're doing percentages and tax rates, we don't see the decimal. We have to learn how to convert this to a percentage. Now, in high school or in a business math class I teach here at Highline, how do we do that? We look at the decimal and then we slide it one, two positions to the right. That will give us the number 10. And then we would add a percentage symbol. That's how we would do it manually. But in I clicked Escape there. But in Excel, we don't have to do that. We just type the decimal in. And guess what? Number formatting comes to our rescue. Now, do not click that percentage dial, because it actually formats a percent with zero decimal showing. And sometimes that causes problems. We want the drop down. And look at this. There it is. Number formatting is going to format it. It's already giving us a preview right there of what's going to show up in the cell. So when I click Percentage Formatting, there it is. All right, 10 pennies for every $1. Now, our formula. Well, we're going to type an equal sign, left arrow to put the employee's pay for the month. And then we're going to multiply, because we need to take every one of those dollars and take out 10 cents for every dollar. So now, pay times tax rate. Now, if we were to copy this formula down, these are both relative cell references. So we can't do that. We have to hit Enter and then create our next formula, equals. Oh, and if you don't believe that, let's just click Escape and try just for one row. I'm going to not double click. I'm simply going to use my Angry Rabbit on top of the fill handle and drag it down one row. Now, if I put this cell in edit mode, oh, yeah, those are relative cell reference. The blue one is always one cell to my left. And the orange one is always one, two cells to my right. And that's not what we want. I'm going to click Escape and then the Delete key to delete the content. Now I want to come back up here. And I'm not even going to delete it. I'm just going to start over. Equal sign, the left arrow, times right arrow, right arrow. 
Now we need to tell Excel that we do not want this as a relative cell reference. We want to lock it. And the way you do that is your cursor's touching the cell J4. Find the F4 key. And when you hit F4, it puts the secret code in dollar signs in front of the column and the row. That means no matter where we copy this formula, it's always locked on J4. That is amazing because when we control enter, and with our fill handle and angry rabbit, double click and send it down, go to the last cell in F2, that is a huge time saver. Anytime you have a single number that's going to be multiplied or added or whatever against a bunch of other numbers. We have just upped our game in our ability to create Excel formulas. We used a relative cell reference and an absolute cell reference to quickly make lots of calculations. Now I'm going to hit Enter. Let's highlight all of these, both raw data numbers and our formula. Now I'm going to come up and apply something like currency. We can do the same over here. All of these numbers typed in numbers, formulas, and I'm going to apply currency. Now normally, we would actually do both columns in a single template, but I just wanted to split up the two different calculations. Because notice these numbers are exactly the numbers we need to calculate over here. That's a lot of power if you ever are in a situation where you have to make a lot of calculations. Now we want to go look at our next example on the sheet, data analysis. So I click that sheet. And here's that same table of data we had at the beginning of the video. We have a day column, player name, and number of wins. Now, in our first example, we already had the drop down here that allowed us to sort. We want to see how easy it is to convert our table of data into an Excel table that will allow us to sort and filter. Now, in order to have a table of data, you got to have the column name at the top. These column names are also called fields. But for us, they're column names. you got to have the column names, and then each row is a particular record or event. Monday, Jabari, 6 wins. Monday, Makina, 11 wins. Once you have your data set up like this, and there are empty cells all the way around your data set, it's OK to be right next to either the row headers or the column headers. But once we have our data set set up like that, you click in a single cell, and it doesn't matter which single cell, and go up to Insert and click on the Table button. Or you can use the keyboard Control-T. Very importantly, it asks you, my table has headers? Yes, indeed. It's checked, so we click OK. Now, it does a bunch of things. First off, it formats it. And if you want, you can even come up and format it differently, including clicking the More button. And there's all sorts of different styles here. I'm going to leave it as blue. And we see that the Table Tools Design ribbon tab comes up. We definitely want to come over to Properties and name this. Table 2 is not a good name for this table. So I'm going to click up there. It automatically highlights everything. And I'm going to call this something smart like Wins Table and then hit Enter. So now this table is named Wins Table. Now there's three amazing things that the table feature will allow us to do. The first, and we saw this in our in the beginning of the videos, we can use these little drop downs to sort or, as we'll see, to filter. Now before I do that, I want to highlight this record right here, Wednesday, Tyrone, 10 wins. And I'm going to right click. And on the mini toolbar, there's our bucket of paint to fill the cells. I'm going to click the drop down and select yellow. Now the reason I want to do that is because when we sort this column to show biggest to smallest, we want to notice that the records or the rows remain intact. So now when I come up and I want to see the biggest ones on top, there it is, Z to A. I have just done data analysis going from raw data into useful information or organized information where I can see biggest to smallest. And most importantly, the records remain intact. Now you can sort. We could do smallest to largest, and then the 6 is on top. And we could sort alphabetically. I could come over here and say Z to A. And now we have all of Jabari's, all of Makina, all of Tyrone's records together. 
I'm going to come over, sort largest to smallest. The second thing that this table feature can do is to filter. That means we can come to a drop down, and instead of using sort, I can come down here in these check boxes. I can uncheck everything and, for example, check Jabari only. This actually will hide all of the rows that are not Jabari. So when I click OK, it looks like the sort we did earlier, except for this. We could see that there are rows hidden. You know that they're hidden because the numbers are missing. You also see the color blue. That means the rows are hidden. And there's that little filter button. Now, if our goal is to copy Jabari's records and put them as a new sheet down here, filtering is faster because it doesn't matter where these records are in the table. Instantly, everything's hidden except for Jabari. Now, I'm going to highlight the whole table using my selection cursor. Or, of course, we can click in a single cell and use Control Asterisk, as we saw earlier in the video. Now I want to copy this. And instead of going to Home, Copy, or right click, Copy, I want to use the keyboard, Control C. And look at that. Just like that, the Dancing Ants are dancing around only the visible cells. When I go to paste this on a new sheet, the hidden rows will not be pasted. Now, I want to insert a new sheet. There's this great button right here. I simply click, and there's a new sheet. Cell A1 is selected. Now I'm going to paste it. Not using up here, not right click, paste. I'm going to use the keyboard Control V. By the way, Control C, Control V, those are the oldest keyboards in the history of computers, and they work in every program you'll ever use. Now I want to zoom out so this is bigger. I could come down to the status bar, and there's a zoom bar here. Or I could use the keyboard holding Control and actually using the wheel on my mouse. Control and using the wheel on your mouse works in many programs, including websites. All right, so that's pretty cool. We filtered and then copied and pasted on a new sheet. Now, wait a second. Sheet 2, that's not a good name. We have these great names over here, Data Analysis, Formulas 2. So now how do we rename? Easy. We simply double click Sheet 2. And now I'm going to type Jabari and Enter. There's Jabari's records. All right, now we want to go back over here. And how do we turn the Dancing Ants off? We can hit the Escape key, and that turns the Dancing Ants off. Now, how do we unfilter? Well, we can actually go up to the Data Ribbon tab, and in the Sort and Filter group, there's a great button, Clear. We could also come to our dropdown and use the Clear, or we could refilter with something different. For example, Makina. Click OK. That is still filtered. I want to clear it. I'm going to use Clear Filter. The advantage to this button up here is if you have multiple filters on multiple columns, when you click this one, it clears them all. Now we saw sort and filter. Now we want to see how to create a chart. Now if we're going to create a chart from this, I would like to plot everyone's names and then see visually these numbers. We can use a column chart. And obviously, the, the biggest number will be the tallest column smallest number will be the smallest column. Now, before I actually build a chart, I want it to show Monday's activity, then Tuesday's activities. If we try to come up and sort A to Z, that's not going to work. And the reason why is because days of the week when sorted correctly, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, are not alphabetic. No problem. Let's go up to the Data Ribbon tab. Sort and Filter group, and there's a Sort dialog box. I click that, and it's going to ask me, which column do I want to sort by? Well, I would like to sort by the day on the values. That's fine. That just means whatever's there. And if we come over to this dropdown, look at that. There's our custom list that was actually used behind the scenes, for example, when we created Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the cell. But that custom list is stored in a custom list dialog box. Now I can click the custom list I want. Click OK. Click OK. And there we have all of the Monday, all of the Tuesday records, and so on. 
Now I'd like to make a chart, a column chart. I click in a single cell, go up to Insert, and over in the Chart Group. There's lots of charts, but most of the time, all of this is chart junk. You really want to just stick to the column chart. Now, there are some exceptions. But in general, the column chart, when you're comparing numbers to see which one's bigger and smaller, the column chart works best. For example, when I click this, when we look down here, we can quickly see the difference and pick out that this is the biggest. Now, notice what this amazing visualization did. It put all of the names, but also the subcategories here. So there's Monday, there's Tuesday. That is an amazing chart. Now, there's a couple things we would like to do. One is, that is not a good name for this chart. So I'm simply going to click the chart, and we see a solid line. I simply start typing, and this is going to be kind of weird. I'm going to type Overwatch. And you notice I was typing, but I didn't see it here. It's actually appearing up in the formula bar. All right, so Overwatch space wins. And now I hit Enter, and there we go. Now, wouldn't it be cool if we had the actual number right on top of the columns? Well, we can do that. The green plus means we can add or take away stuff from the chart. I click on the green plus, and I would like to check data labels. And just like that, I have my numbers. Now, when you're making charts, the number one rule for charting is no chart junk. And what that means is, is there anything in this chart that is not helping us? Well, in this case, there is. I want you to notice we have numbers here and numbers here. This is unnecessary repetition. Now, we could go over and specifically use our checkbox, but that's not necessary. When you're deleting something, you just click on it and then use your Delete key. That is a great chart. Now, it gets even better. Remember, we talked about three things that the Excel table can do. It can sort. It can filter. But if we come down to the bottom and start adding records, for example, for Saturday, our chart will automatically update. Now, the way we add records to the bottom of a table is I click in the last cell in the last record and hit the Tab key. Now, I type SAT. And when I hit Tab, I can already see it appearing over here. Jabari, tab. He had 11. And watch this when I hit tab. Now I get another record. And I want you to notice something. I didn't type the whole Saturday here. All I did was type S. And this is called autocomplete. It looks above. And if there's a word that starts with S, it gives it to us as an option. Now if I hit tab, Saturday will be accepted. Now watch this. M, I see Makina tab. That is making our life easy. Now, it was a two-way tie. They both got 11. Now, when I hit Tab, S, Tab, T, and it already knows Tyrone Tab. Yes, indeed, it was a three-way tie. And look at our chart, totally dynamic and automatic. Now, I see the names Makina, Tyrone, Jabari, Jabari, Tyrone, Makina, not in the same order. Well, let's do something about that. I'm going to click in a single cell data up to the sort dialog box. We have day already. I'm going to add a level. So then within each one of these, I want to sort player name values A to Z is fine. And now when I click OK, look at that. It's Monday, 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 Jabari, Makina, Tyrone. Tuesday, Jabari, Makina, Tyrone, exactly the same order. That is some powerful data analysis. We are keeping track of whatever it may be. In our case, it was video game wins, but it could be anything you're keeping track of. We use the Excel table, and we have this chart. As soon as we add new records, they are incorporated. Now, that's pretty amazing for data analysis. But if we go over to the sheet pivot table and click on pivot table, the most amazing feature in Excel it's going to be insert in that button right there. Now, let's just look at our data set and figure out what our goal is here, and then we'll see how to solve it using a pivot table. Your boss asked you to add up all the sales for each employee. That means I somehow need to gather all of Jabari's, just all of those numbers. 
and then Adam and list the name. Then I need to do the same thing for Gigi and so on. Each employee, I somehow need to pick out the numbers Adam and make a little report. Anytime you have a proper data set, meaning you have your column names or field names at the top, and you have a row or a record for each one of your events or transactions, you can use a pivot table to do exactly that. We'll just tell the pivot table, hey, use the sales rep name, give us a unique list of that listed over here, and then add it. And it will be like three clicks, and it will make that report. Just to see how amazing this is, let's remind ourselves. Click in a cell, Control down arrow. Look at that. It's that same data set we saw at the beginning with 5,000 records. There is no way I'd want to do this by hand. Control up arrow. Not only that, but this has one extra column that we didn't have earlier in this video. This has the actual product we're selling. We're selling boomerang products. We're selling to stores all over the world. So Jabari on 417 sold a batch of Carlotas, a bunch of them for 481. Gigi sold a bunch more Carlotas, like almost three to four times as many for 941.14. All right, so our goal, get a list of the sales rep names, and then add all the sales. All right, you ready? Click in a single cell, go up to Insert Table Group and Insert Pivot Table. And just like that, look at that. Because we had a proper data set and we had empty cells all the way around, it totally guessed right. And actually, that's a table name. That's the name of that table. The only thing we have to do is say where we want our pivot table. We usually put it on a new sheet. But just to see the power of this, and since our pivot table is so small, I'm going to put it on this existing sheet. So I click Existing Sheet location, and let's say F12. I would not want to put it right next to the data set, at least one column away. Now when I click OK, here's our, and notice they call them pivot table fields. These are really column headers. The fancy name is fields. So they say, here's your list of pivot fields. That's each one of our columns from our data table. Now if our report's going to list sales rep names in rows, and then the numbers we're going to add up, we simply come over to the column we want, which is sales rep. I'm going to click and drag. Notice that symbol says, no, you can't put it there. No, you can't put it there. But when you come down to rows, filters, or columns, those are the places we can drop it. Now, when I drop it in rows, instantly one of each sales rep is listed in rows. Just that one feature alone is amazing. That means the boss gave us this data set, and we may not even know all the names of the sales rep. But by doing a pivot table and dragging sales rep down to rows, it gives us a unique list. Now, if we want to add sales, there's one other area, the values area. That's where you make your calculation. You notice that little sigma sign. That means adding. So when I drag this number field sales, down to values. That is amazing. A few clicks, and I went from 5,000 rows to the report I wanted, each one of the sales rep and their totals. Now, a couple things. I have a slightly different version than you may have, so you might not see sales rep here. If that's the case, you go up to the Pivot Table Tools, Design, over to Layout. And in the Layout group, you select Report Layout and select Show in Tabular Form. That will make sure that you see your field names there. The other thing we need to do is number formatting. Now, instead of like we did in Excel, highlighting all the cells and then going up to the Home Ribbon tab for Number, we all we have to do is click in a single cell. Since this is a pivot table, it doesn't matter which one single cell, right click and point to number formatting. And this dialog box will allow us to add some number formatting to the actual field. That means even if we change our row label, it'll still have the number formatting. I'm going to select currency, click OK. Now, why is it called a pivot table? The reason why is, let's say your boss came in. And first off, your boss was amazed because you did it like in 20 seconds instead of the 
two hours that he thought it would take you to create it. But the boss said, no, I really wanted this sales rep to be listed in the columns and then the total below. Well, because this is a pivot table, I can pivot the rows to columns. Down here, that means I pivot the rows over to columns. So what do I do? I simply click and drag. I am pivoting my pivot table. And just like that, it's listed across the column. That is amazing. Now the boss decided, no, no, that doesn't look so good. So you simply drag it back, and your boss is amazed. Now the boss says, well, if pivot tables are so powerful, what if we have sales rep here, and we used the product across the top of the column? Now I'm going to scroll over a bit using my scroll arrow, and I'm going to drag boomerang product down to columns. And just like that, every cell here now tells us something different. Makina had 19,000 and some odd dollars selling the distance rang over this period. She had 29,000 selling the fast catch boomerang, 71,000 selling the fun fly. Now, maybe you don't like it like that. So let's drag boomerang products over to sales rep. And instantly, I kind of like this one. There's the sales rep, the names of the products, and instantly we have the total. Now, notice we formatted that with right-click number formatting. And of course, every time we pivot the pivot table, that number formatting follows along. That is the most powerful feature in Excel. And here's the great news. We saw how easy it is. Most people think that pivot tables are scary and hard. So if you go into your job and you know how to do this, you are going to be an Excel star. Now, we have one last topic. And we're going to go over to the sheet Flash Fill. Now, our last topic is called Clean Your Data. Now, really, this is a subcategory of data analysis. Because here's the deal. Sometimes we get data like this, first and last, and we just want first name listed. Or we get telephone numbers, and we need to add the parentheses, space, and dash and create a new list here. Or we get a list of books, and the authors are in parentheses, and we just want the author name. Well, guess what? There's an amazing feature called Flash Fill. And Flash Fill can be found up on the Data Ribbon tab. There it is. But we actually don't have to use that button very often. And here's why. Here's our data. We have first and last. And we recognize it's always first space last, first space last, all the way down. Well, we simply come over right next to the column. And I'm going to type capital M and a little o, that's the first name. So not only am I trying to get just the first name, but I'm going to try and change the case. When I hit Enter, and as soon as I type capital G, that's the flash fill. That is a ghost list that pops up. Now, it's called flash fill, but really what happens is we are giving Excel an example. We're telling Excel, hey, I just want everything before the space, and please only capitalize the first letter. Microsoft calls this program by example. We give it an example. Behind the scenes, it builds a little program that does the heavy lifting for us. Now, once we see our ghost list and it looks good, I simply hit Enter. That is one of the more amazing things that Excel can do. Over here, I'm going to type open parentheses, 206, close parentheses. So far, all I've done is add two parentheses. But there's another space I added, 5, 8, 7. Then I'm adding a dash, 4545. Five. Look at that. Telephone number, I formatted it correctly. Now, this is a case where everything is exactly the same. So I actually can hit Enter. And if I come up and click Flash Fill, because this one example is enough for the program behind the scene to do its thing, I can simply click this button. Or notice there's a keyboard, Control-E. I'm going to use Control-E. That is amazing. Think about how much time this saves when our data is not in the form we want. Over here, I'm going to cheat. Watch this. I'm going to come over and double click to put it in edit mode. And very carefully, with my eye beam cursor, highlight the author's name, Control-C to copy, tab. 
and then control v to paste. Now when I hit enter, that didn't work at one over here. I'm going to click right here. I'm going to type a T. Oh, look at that. One example was not enough, so I'm going to type this out. But now when I hit Enter, and as soon as I type the D for Dan Brown, look at that. Two examples, and it knew what to do. It's extracting the author's names from within the parentheses. Now I hit Enter to accept it. That is simply amazing. Yet another example of how Excel with Flash Fill can make our job easy. Wow, this was an epic video about the magic of Excel. Flash Fill is certainly magic when we want to transform or clean our data. Back on the pivot table sheet, we saw how to go from 5,000 records with a little pivot table magic, create our report. Back over on data analysis, we saw the magic of the Excel table feature to sort, filter, and create dynamic ranges. We also saw how to create this visual interpretation of the number data over here using the column chart. Over on Formulas 2, we saw some magic when we had to do a bunch of calculations. In both cases, we were able to create a single formula and copy it down. And it did all the calculating for us. Back over on Formula 2, we saw how to use the max, min, sum, and average function to work off of 5,000 rows and make calculations quickly. Over on Format and Formulas, we saw how to do formatting and formulas to build a template that automatically updates anytime we change the data. And of course, back on what is Excel, we talked about what is Excel and what Excel does. All right, that's a lot of magic with Excel that can give you power to do what you need to do in your life and in your job. If you liked the video, be sure to click that thumbs up, add a comment, and sub to the channel. And we'll see you next video.